that uh, there could be change. I mean, I think everyone feels sorry for Wayne, but... I think I the, the other thing that people don't realise, though, these days is coaches are on big ticket wages and you just can't flick a coach that easily. I mean, uh, when you, you, you're struggling to make, you know, $50,000 a year profit as a football club or 100000 to give somebody the flick and have to pay two coaches in a year, it's a big decision. And it's big for Carlton because Carlton are financially great off the field this year. They really aren't. And, but again, Carlton traditionally don't pay their coaches a lot of money, Ed, so... You know, I think they might be able to carry this one. They've got a few in the coaches' box, though, Robert. You want to count up the figures there. But uh, what is, so, what's the go? You mentioned Wayne Carey there uh, in your intro. Uh, uh, did they, they've spoken to Wayne Carey. It's, uh, I think everybody knows that, yep. that they spoke last year. If you were able to take over Carlton as a, as a coach, Wayne Britton or otherwise, and you could get Wayne Carey in the second draft and pick up the two best draft picks of the uh, that are going around, you've got a fair foundation to build on. Bring back Ratton, Kudafidis, all these other guys who have been out. Allen. I mean, they're not that bad, the Blues. No, not at all. And just before we get off Wayne Britton and we get on to Wayne Kerry, you know, the, the coaches out there in waiting, say Rocket Eat, he's made, he, he wants to coach Carlton, he wants to coach anywhere next year. If Rocket Eat took Carlton, they had Kerry as those draft picks that you're talking about, they are going to be a fairly strong combination. And uh, if they are to rebuild, if they strip back and get rid of some of uh, what they're saying now, some players who aren't quite up to it, it might take two years, might take three years, but... Uh, you know, it can be done these days, and that's why the significance of the draft concessions last week, that AFL uh, rule change, the backflip with the uh, Northern markets not getting the, the free handouts, is going to help sides on the bottom of the ladder rebuild quickly if they're prepared to bite the bullet. All right, let's move off Carlton. There's enough on the Blues there. Kevin Sheedy last night was, or well, all week, seemed to be off on a tangent, didn't he? Yeah, he did, Kevin. I don't think he's going to get out of this one lightly. I think the AFL are not going to be happy with Kevin running out last night and clapping, clapping the umpires. Kevin will say he was praying or he was not, wouldn't clap the Martians anyway, but he had a big week, Sheets. He had a big week. He said there was a conspiracy at the AFL. He said there was going to be no rules last night. The team got beaten. He was clapping the umpires. I think we're not going to hear and, the end of that. And Graham, that one. Graham McMahon, the president, came out, the chairman of Essendon yeah. came out and gave the AFL a clip as well. So it's good to see the Bombers and the AFL are going toe to toe at the moment. Hang on, you'd be wrapped. Ed, Blues and Bombers both in trouble. It takes the heat off me for a week anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it's interesting, though, that the Bombers obviously feeling it at the moment because you know, Graham McMahon came out and said that uh, Sheeds was treated badly last year. Sheeds has had a go during the week. And I thought the significant story out of Gary Lyon's uh, 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 Sunday footy show today was Lee Matthews saying that maybe the Bombers should foot the bill for all the wrestling fines given the fact they set the agenda. I mean, if somebody's going to wrestle with you, you, there's not much you can do about it. It was his argument. Yeah, no, I... But Lee, Lee, the be beauty about that, I mean, uh, that's not going to happen, but the beauty about footy at the moment is Lee Matthews and Kevin Sheedy have got a great rivalry oh, have they ever? going. And it's not hatred, I don't know what it is, but it's fantastic. They snipe at each other almost every game they, they lead up to. Yeah, there's, look, there's no doubt there's, there's huge respect between people in football, but this next month, uh, just for people watching today, the amount of pressure on everybody, every team, either to make the finals, make top four, Keep your job and your house probably because it's big money. It's a career these days. No one has second jobs outside of football much these times. And all these other things happening, it is a pressure cooker. And uh, as we know in the media, very hard to get people to do stories at the moment. Yeah, there is, Dad. But the, tell, the one person who's going to be doing a story this week is, uh, is Wayne Carey. You mentioned him at the top of the program. He'll be doing his first interview, I suppose, since uh, he spoke to me and the other network uh, early in the year. But uh, Wayne, Wayne's probably going to have to ask some curly, answer some curly questions this week. Probably about his future, his life, the meetings last week with Anthony Stevens, Glenn Archer, where he's going to be playing next year. Um, yeah, Wayne's going to be back in the headlines. It is, and I look forward to Mike Sheen writing the story as he did about uh, the Ox appearing on the footy show and uh, giving a media conference, but yet able to host his own show on Foxtel with a contracted person. That we well, you can look forward to yeah, that. I know. It won't be appearing, <laughs> I know that. Thanks very much, Robbo. We'll catch you next week. The footy coming up right after this.